Hey everybody, um, I want to do a quick video about the Olympics which is going on right now here in Tokyo. Um, a lot of people, a lot of my friends and family have reached out to me asking, you know, how is it, what's it like, what do you think, uh, you know, any amazing stories, anything crazy happen, things like that. And uh, so I wanted to just, I've, I've avoided this a lot with a lot of people because it's one of those topics that can, either way you answer it, you're going to get a lot of backlash. Because of course, you know, with what's, what's going on in the world, why would you do this or blah 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 so even in Tokyo if you're walking around you see the reporters they try to you know ask you hey what do you think what's your feelings what's your, your opinion and, you know I just ignore them or try not to be anywhere near them but the Olympics is almost over uh, Paralympics will be starting soon so I figured what I have to lose you know so my opinion on the matter okay um one, to answer one quick question that a lot of people have asking is crazy stories of what's going on. So just so you know, the athletes cannot leave the Olympic Village. They are stuck in the village, and when they, they finish competing, then I believe they have to fly out the next day or the next two days. They only have like a day or two here before they have to get on a flight and leave. We have no interaction with the athletes. Uh, the only people allowed in there are staff and people working for the Olympics and stuff like that, or coaches. We, no, normal uh spectators and stuff are not allowed to go in there's no fans there's they stand outside maybe the village or around the area and stuff to you know support the athletes or protest or whatever they're doing but we have no interaction with them they are in the village they're not really supposed to leave i guess the towers their apartment towers they're supposed to stick within their like their country's building i guess australia america you know they separated them and from what i've seen from social media though the guys are loving it the girls are loving it they they love the food here. They love the, you know, the, the Olympic Village is nice. They've got them like little shopping centers and stuff for them and, you know, restaurants with a bunch of different types of foods. And from what I've seen from social media, it seems like everybody's having a good time. Heat, I think uh, they were a little surprised about the heat here. It's hard to explain. I mean, even in Missouri, it gets hot. But here it'll be 94, 95, and you're like, oh, I'm from Texas or I'm from Arizona. It gets 106 here, yes, but it's 100% humidity here. So the temperature is 95, but it feels like 110. Big difference. You have to take two, two shirts with you when you leave the house just to change so you, you're not walking around with a soggy shirt from all the sweat. And a lot of people from the Olympics, like staff, were passing out from the heat, and they, they just weren't expecting it. So that was a little bit of a complaint. But, I mean, from what I've seen on social media, they love it. They're having a great time. And it's fun to see these guys on TikTok and Instagram and stuff, you know, trying different foods and, you know, stuff that fans, that people leave them or stuff like by the, when they're driving by, the fans try to leave them presents and stuff. Uh, for that part, I, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that they like it. I wish they could, they could have got to see the country a little more, got to go experience Tokyo, Yokohama, the, you know, the food, the views and stuff. But, yeah, they can always come back. So the big question, the main question is, what do I think about the Olympics? I, I think it should have been postponed or canceled or, uh, you know, I think they should have went forward with it. This is a very difficult question to answer because uh, it's a double-bladed sword. It's a double-edged sword. I mean, however I answer it, there's always going to be the opposite opinion. So I'll just give you my opinion and from there, I mean, what can I do? So I'd like to say yes or no, but there is no yes or no. I believe Yes, it should have been held, and they should have went forward with it like they did. But then again, no, in a sense of they were they should have prepared for it better with what's going on and stuff. So it's uh, I know it doesn't really answer it yet, but yes and no. On the yes side, the athletes. I believe for the athletes and everything that they went through and trained for and they've done, they deserve this opportunity to earn a medal or even participate or try, even if they're bottom of the world chances of you know one out of 50 chance of winning bronze, they still they deserve that opportunity for what time and you know effort that they put into this the sport that they're competing for. So that's my, I guess, main thing of like, I don't mind the Olympics went forward because I believe they, they need that opportunity. They, they deserve it. The, you gotta think, these athletes train, they put so much time and they put so much you know, their families put so much money into it. They, when they're kids, they're six, seven years old, put them into Olympic gymnastics, Olympic juniors, Olympic seniors, Olympic. I mean, they, their whole life, they don't go to school or homeschool. No, this isn't everybody. This isn't every country. This is, I mean, from basic, from what I know from America and watching TV shows and movies about around Olympics. Korea, I know if you win a medal that you don't have to go to the military. I think other some other countries also have that rule. 
things like that. So a lot of countries support their Olympic athletes differently. So, I mean, of course, the countries that support their athletes are going to give them a little more privileges, a little more benefits and stuff. But you know, for the most part, these athletes perform and, and, and put their life through this living hell of risking injuries and all everything that they're doing for this opportunity. If they win medal, bronze, or gold, yeah, they might get an endorsement from Nike or Adidas. They might wind up on a cereal box. Maybe they make some money. They do some TV shows. They get noticed. They get recognized, and they get a little bit of a little bit back from all this time and effort that they've put into this their entire life. Now, some some sports are different. Yes, I know. Maybe a gymnast has to train 500 hours a week, but uh. The badminton, maybe 150. I don't know the difference. You know, I, mean, I don't know the sports that well, but I know that they all put their everything they got into it, and they're doing it just for this one opportunity. They might only be able to make it to one Olympics. They might, maybe they can do two or three or four or five. But you know, for every four years, a lot happens in four years. You you get injured. You you get old. You get pregnant. You, I mean, you can do anything. Can happen in four years. That, basically ruins your chances to go back to the Olympics. So they deserve this opportunity. If this was their one and only chance, by all means, go for it. So in that sense, I really think the Olympics should have went forward like they did, and they give these these athletes the opportunity to to show the world that they're, you know, top world athletes. It's, I mean, if you put all that time in, even the families that sacrificed you know, a good life to make sure they can support their child through these Olympic trainings. And maybe it's a somebody with siblings that one child got to go to the Olympics training, the other one's, you know, living a low life with finances and stuff because they, they couldn't afford to do it for two kids. You know, there's a lot of things you don't know about that these athletes have went through that this is maybe their one and only chance to say thank you to their mom or dad or, or you know, to give them something back or let them, you know, Here's the medal, thank you, kind of thing. I mean, you don't know. I know there was one athlete, one gymnast who pulled out, and America went all against her because, you know, they thought oh, she's she gave up on her team. You, this is another one that's kind of a hard topic, but what you don't understand is in Japan, there are a lot of other laws and other rules and other things that are different than other countries. Like Canada, you can enjoy some special cigarettes if you want because it's legal there but in you know another country you get the death sentence for having that kind of stuff but you got to remember japan is very strict on these kind of laws now i don't know what happened i don't know what 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 her story is i didn't talk to her i haven't met her so i don't know that but i do know there was rumors of her needing medication that she's been taking her entire life and I know that medication is not legal here. There is no substitute for it. And I have dealt with this before with baseball players. They come here and they're expecting to get the medication that they've been on their entire life, which is completely legal in the States. There is no, there is nothing wrong with the medication that they're taking. But in Japan, it falls under a different uh, doping, not doping, it's like basically just illegal. It's like having an illegal substance. And when you get here, and, and these baseball players, they, they sign in, they do their stuff, and, you know, they check in, and they like, well, yeah, I have this medication. they got to take it straight to the police station, turn it in, and tell them sorry. They didn't know they couldn't bring it in or whatever and fill out these forms. And they can't get it. There is no substitute medication. And when your body is used to taking uh, Tylenol for 15 years or 14 years for your headaches, and then they tell you you can't have Tylenol anymore, you, you, you know, you're going to have a type of withdrawal from any kind of medication. And that being said, this is just rumors. Like I don't know any details about it, but that being said, that was kind of what the situation here. This athlete is throwing her body around, like flipping and running and jumping and landing on a little, with her wrist on a little pedestal flipping more. She needs 100% focus. She needs to know that when she runs down that mat and she does whatever flip or whatever turn or whatever spin, that she's going to land right and land right, and land right, and flip right, and land right, to not break her legs or arms or hurt herself. But if she's not mentally ready for that, if she's not mentally focused, if she can't see herself doing it, anybody who's played play sports knows you you got to visualize it. If she cannot visualize it, 
then why would she risk her life? I mean, it's not, she's not playing, mm, I don't know what's, uh, badminton, ping pong. She's not playing ping pong. So she's not, that ball isn't going to fly up and hit her in the eye and knock her eye out and put a hole in her head. This is more dangerous. She needs to be 100% 100 confident that she can make it down that, whatever floor or whatever bouncy thing that they're on without any injuries. She wasn't. She wasn't confident. She wasn't secure. She wasn't feeling that she could do it. So she withdrew, which, why would you be mad at her? Why would you shoot her down? Why would you say anything negative about that? If, you know, say Michael Jordan felt like his ankle was sore and it was on the verge of cracking or breaking or something and he was like I can't play today I'm sorry but my ankle's sore I don't want to risk breaking it you, yeah fans would be like oh you know don't be like that and then they show you an x-ray and you see a crack in it or something okay well yeah he made the right call well she made the right call she's she said she wasn't mentally prepared or whatever it was now it could be something else maybe she had a hot chili pepper and her stomach hurt and she she didn't feel good I don't know but from the rumors and what I've dealt with with these athletes in a similar situation, it's common. They, they need a drug that helps them focus, that helps them balance their, their mental state. If you can't get it, then you're not focusing, then why take a risk? She did exactly what she should have done. For the team, she backed out. They did great. Why be mad at her? You should, I think you should show her appreciation and more respect, the fact that she knew that she couldn't do what she was there for to do, and she handed it off. She handled the reins to handed the reins to the next person. Like here, you know, I'm leaving it up to you. These, like I said, these people train and practice and work out for their entire life to do this one opportunity. And yeah, she's one of the best in the world, and she's got it. But she didn't want to walk away. She didn't do all that and come here to to walk away. She did it because she had to. And for me to see that the way people handle that was just so. It's just so wrong, insulting. But anyway, total another subject. Yet again, not double blade sword. People could comment, make remarks, however they want. That's just my opinion. So, on the sense of why the Olympics, I don't think the Olympics should have went forward, is more or less. I don't think Japan was prepared for it. They weren't ready for it. And when I say that, I don't mean the villages and the, the stadiums and the arenas. They, those were all ready to go, perfect. It was more towards the pandemic and what's going on. I just got my paper for a vac vaccine. Olympics is almost over. I got my paper saying, hey, I could make a reservation for a possibility of a chance to, to set up a time maybe to get my vaccine, the first shot, within the next month or two. They knew the Olympics was coming here in advance. I believe, I think so. I mean, when they bid, bid for it and they get it, I believe they know what's coming. And for a country to, to host the entire world and all the athletes, I think you would want them, the athletes, to come in knowing that they're, hey, you know, this place has done all, everything they could to make you safe and, you know, not to worry about the pandemic and stuff. But I think before the Olympics got here, 20% of the population had been vaccinated. They waited so long. I mean, literally, I just got the paper now, like a week or two ago. And I know people still haven't got their paper saying that they can make the reservation for the possibility. So, that was handled very poorly, and I think that could have been better, better prepared for, in the sense that they knew it was going to be pushed back a year and everything like that. Uh, other things, I know they put a lot of money into the Olympics to get everything, you know, all the buildings and everything like that. So, since they couldn't let, you know, fans come in and they couldn't let, you know, uh, People watch the games, come here and spend money and party because a lot of restaurants and bars upgraded their menus, electronics and English menus and redid their their places to be more foreign friendly and nobody came so they're struggling too. But the government paid all this money for these, these facilities. I, I, we're going to have to pay it. I mean it's going to hit us in taxes. I'm sure they're going to come up with these weird taxes and then we're going to have to wind up paying for this. For example, right now... Uh, when the Olympics first came in 20, for 2020, they said that they were going to raise the highway $10. So to get on a highway now, not like the states where you drive and you have to pay after 200 miles and you pay a little bit. Here, to get on the highway costs, we'll say $15. It's like 13 20 30 So you get on the highway, you pay $15. And it doesn't matter if it's one stop, five stops, ten stops. You get off the exits or whatever. You pay $15 to get on the highway. 
to drive through Tokyo. So now it's $25. So if I want to go to Tokyo and back, that's $50 round trip just for the highway fee. And so last year I said that that was to keep people off the road so that there would be less traffic. And it's like Tokyo is like L.A. You've got traffic everywhere. So they were just trying to get money out of the people. The people who drive here don't. I mean, they spent all the money on driving school, which is like three thousand dollars. They bought a car. They pay for parking spaces, which parking spaces are three three hundred to eight hundred dollars a month. They spend all this money so they don't have to take a train. They prefer to move at their own pace and don't not be squished into a tuna can. They want that, you know. They put this money into it, so they're not focusing on like going to the Olympics. They just don't want to take a train, so they 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 buy cars and they do all this. So by them telling you, okay, well, we want to keep the traffic down, everybody who's driving wasn't going to the Olympics. Some of the, the, the spectators who are coming here or the fans who are coming here, they don't know how much the highway fee is. So them renting a car and getting on the highway, they're just like, oh, wow, $25, that's expensive. But they're still going to drive around because they rented a car and they're here for the Olympics for two or three weeks. So they're going to take advantage of traveling. It was just a way the government was going to make some money back. And if they really wanted to get people away from driving and taking the train why didn't they just lower the train fees half price for the olympics okay if highway's fifteen dollars but getting on a train to tokyo is a dollar fifty maybe i would take that rather than jumping on the highway but now they upped the price so even though now the spectators aren't here and there's no people coming they still raise the price of the highway so for me to go to the office and back is fifty dollars nobody can go to the games it has nothing to do with the games it's just their way of making money back for the olympics and I, I, I have a strong feeling that after the Olympics is over, they'll, they'll lower the price back down to $15, but then they'll raise it to probably about 20 just because the road damage for the Olympic when the Olympics was here kind of thing. And then that's where we're going to have to wind up paying more money too is get on the highway. It's going to be $20 instead of 15 things like this. Now think about all the people in L.A. who use the highway to drive around. And each of them pay $25 or $15 or $20 just to get on the highway. How much money? Do you think those, that, that state or city would make of those amount of people driving on the highway? That's Japan. I mean, millions of people driving on the highway. They're making a good penny off that. But what can you do? Another thing that Japan didn't really prepare for, or they have these, these uh, lockdowns and these, they've handled the lockdowns poorly, very poorly. So there's still high corona cases right now. And, They've never actually locked down Japan. They've never, like in the States or wherever, where if you're seen outside, you get fined if you do this. So they do these like, uh, we, we don't want you to go out. So we highly, we highly recommend you stay home and don't go out and things. But they don't say you can't. So, of course, people are going to go out. There's no rule saying they can't. They just say we, we think it would be a good idea you didn't. So that was how it first started. And then after a while, it didn't really help with the numbers, the corona cases. So then they were like, okay. You can't, restaurants and bars and cafes or whatever can't be open after 8 o'clock. They want everybody home by 8 o'clock. And the government gave these places money that if they close by 8 o'clock, like $500 a day. So that kind of, you know, got people going home and stuff. But this was last year. This was when this all started. So it's been over a year. The corona cases are, what, 3,000 now in Tokyo? I think it's up higher than ever. So their new thing is... Restaurants and bars and cafes have to close at 8 o'clock, and you can't serve alcohol. Like, alcohol is the issue here. I, I don't drink, so it really doesn't make a difference to me, but not, not being able to serve alcohol isn't the issue. It's the fact that everybody's at the beach. There's thousands of people on the beach right now. And there's another thing. This area, because it's in this, like, location, they can't serve alcohol, but since this, this side of the beach is outside of this area like say this is Springfield and this is Marshfield it's on a line right there so Marshfield doesn't have that rule that you can't serve alcohol so they can serve alcohol over here but they can't serve alcohol over here but there's still the same amount of people on the beach these are just getting drunk and these are drinking coke where is that the problem and this is probably the, the stupidest of them all restaurants bars and cafes fall under that license like the whatever regist business registration license Darts bars, pool pool halls don't fall under that. They are a different registration, like an entertainment, well, in the entertainment venue or whatever it's called, like an arcade. So they can surf alcohol. They can stay up until five o'clock in the morning. 
there is no rule or law saying that those people can't sell alcohol or anything, but the cafes and bars and restaurants can. So what's everybody doing now? They're going to the darts bar. They're going to the pool halls and drinking and staying out until 3 or 4 in the morning. They're not breaking the law. They're not a, it's not a bar, restaurant, or cafe. And that's the stupidest thing. They, they're doing these stupid rules that are hurting mothers, mama and pop restaurants and bars, these places that have been open for 40 years that, you know, survive off of their four or five customers that come in, you know, during the week and eat and drink. So now that they can't serve alcohol, these people aren't coming in because, you know, you can order, eat food at home, you can order a pizza and eat at home. And so they're shutting them down. But the pool hall, and this is, this is honest to God, TJ Fridays is on the first floor. They have to close down by 8 and they can't serve alcohol. So... Yeah, they, they have hardly any customers in there. Some people come in there, eat, and leave real quick. You don't sit, sit around and drink a 7-Up all day. But the pool hall, three floors above them, completely packed. Everybody eats a Friday, goes upstairs, stay there till 3 o'clock in the morning drinking and playing pool and just playing darts and just partying. So Fridays takes a hit, but the pool hall doesn't. And a lot of restaurants and bars and clubs, they're basically calculating that the penalty that they will get for staying open after 8 o'clock is less than what they'll make off the money that they'll get from being open and serving alcohol. So they're just taking the fines and paying them and still doing business regularly. They don't want to bankrupt. They don't want to shut down or lock down or get closed because of this. So the only thing this type of uh, thinking, this type of lockdown is doing is just opening up, opening up, opening up real estate for after Corona. So now you've got 15 little shops that were closed down because mom and pops can't afford to pay rent, closed and empty. So after this is over, somebody's going to come in and just a big company is going to buy all that real estate. That's all they're doing is just opening up real estate for, for the next wave. They're not cutting corona cases. It's 3,000 cases now. They're not the people on the beach. They didn't say you can't go to the beach. They didn't say, you know, no alcohol anywhere to be served. There, you know, there's none of that rules here. It's just like, hey, you know, we suggest you stay away from the beaches. And, you know, this area is not allowed to have alcohol, but since you're just over that city line, then, you know, we can't do nothing about that. It's just totally horribly thought thought up, this whole system. And that that is why a lot of people are mad at the Olympics, because Japan is trying to keep the numbers down so the world doesn't see all this craziness. And so they're, they're doing these stupid rules and laws and it's hurting these businesses and these, these family businesses that's been around for 20, 30 years. Alcohol companies are shutting down. Restaurants and bars that's been around forever are closing because they can't afford the fine. They're not a big company. They're not serving alcohol. But the pool hall upstairs is just racking in money. It just doesn't make sense at all. And there's nothing they can do about it. So that's where you get a lot of this negative Olympic stuff. Like they didn't want them here. You're just hurting, you're, you're hurting the population. And that's why it is. It's because... Japan has basically thought this way to try to keep the numbers down to show that they're doing something and it isn't doing anything but hurting these smaller business owners and of course they're going to be mad because if the Olympics wasn't here they wouldn't even make these rules or laws is what they think and that's where you get that negative you know we don't want the Olympics or you're hurting us so you see those people holding signs saying you're just killing our, our businesses and stuff like that originally they were excited for the Olympics they were going to have all these foreigners here these international people come from all over the world these new you know they were going to spend all this money they were excited about it but now you can't buy alcohol at my bar but just go upstairs to the darts bar and you can drink all night and then i shut down and the darts bar buys me out and opens up two darts bars that's just where we are right now so that's my opinion on the olympics i know it wasn't probably what you wanted to hear um Sorry, I got in the end. I got a little. It's just so frustrating. I feel so sorry because you know, even my in-laws have a, a Kobe Steakhouse and they haven't been able to open for months because they can't take the hit for the fines and it's just it's struggling. The government is giving them a little bit of money, but there's there's issues. There's there's, there's struggles. There, you know, it's, it's coming to a lot of places are like maybe we should just close down, sell you know sell the business or just shut it down. And it's sad when you hear that when these places have been open for 35 years and this is all they know and they're at that age where they're not going to do anything else and they're not going to make enough money off of selling the business to basically put them through for the rest of their life and it's just sad it's just you know and then you see these these people hanging out at a pool hall just having a party having a blast ordering chicken wings and drinking beer all night and it's just whatever can't do nothing about it so that's my opinion uh the olympics is here it's 
no issues there's no interactions I haven't changed my lifestyle there's no been no negative positive it's just they're over there and I'm here I don't go nowhere near them it seems like everybody's having fun uh, I know Japan is doing good in the medals they were so that's good I mean the host company should a host country should always do good uh, I hope America wins overall of course so that's my opinion I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it answered any questions that you have uh, for those of you who didn't like what I had to say, I'm sorry, but everybody has an opinion, and that's mine. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you later.